All right, guys, you find yourself in the forest, you got a hunk of meat, but you got nothing to cook it with. You got no pots, no pans, nothing. So how are you gonna cook it? I'll tell you how. You're gonna use clay. This is an ancient cooking technique, and I'm gonna show you how. All right, so first step is we need to get some clay. Now, that shouldn't be much of a challenge because as you see behind me is my big garden. I featured this before. Problem is, for the garden at least, is it's almost 90% clay or better. So if I dig down anywhere below six inches, I'm gonna hit clay. Good for cooking in clay, bad for gardening because of the water retention. So let's dig a hole, we'll get some clay, and then we'll move on from there. All right guys, so I'm a little bit late on the wild leeks, but I do wanna add some flavor to our meat. So what you may not know about wild leeks is that they're a low-lying wild edible. And so they're competing for sunlight from the upper canopy. So they come out really early in the spring. So what they do is they shoot up in the springtime so that they can still get the sunlight before they're shaded out. So I'm a little bit late on collecting these, but I'm gonna do my best. These are gonna impart a lot of flavor to our wild meats and they're gonna add some moisture where it really counts. Now wild leeks should be harvested sparingly. In fact, this whole clump can go because it's actually right on the trail and so it receives a lot of foot traffic. So I can pull all these out here without damaging any of the uh, remaining bulbs in the area. They're scattered all throughout this forest here, but by harvesting a few from each clump, you're not doing a lot of damage. And as mentioned, they impart a lot of flavor, so you don't need a lot of them. So let's dig these up and we'll add them to our wild meat. Here's another clump that's actually right on the trail and you can see it's already been stepped on. So this is a good candidate for harvest. The ones that are off the side, it can spread easily because they're not being compacted, will leave. But this one is ripe for the picking. Now whenever you're harvesting wild leeks, be mindful of over harvesting. They are something that have been completely extirpated from certain, certain areas. Thankfully, people are not aware of this patch. I have an abundance of wild leeks all over the place. In fact, they're growing right on the trail, which tells me that nobody is looking for them. You see a clump right here below me. This is on the walking trail. So nobody has keyed into this sponge and they're absolutely everywhere. So if I manage this area well, I won't have to worry about going without wild leeks. And that's a special thing. And behind me here is nature's running water. So I'm gonna wash these off using power of nature. But rather than take these home and wash them in the sink and get all that dirt clogged up, we're gonna turn the dirt loose back into the natural environment. Here's another wild edible that's widely discussed. It's a burdock. It's easy to identify. It's got a big giant petal. Uh, I'm not gonna eat the burdock today. Uh, the leaves, I don't know, of questionable value. But the root, I've dug up before. You gotta work for it. It's one of those things that I don't know if I can get a return on my investment. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time today on it. What I am gonna do is collect the leaves and I'm gonna use it as a wrapper for our big hunk of meat. These are early spring leaves, and so they're quite small. So I'm gonna need a fair amount of these in order to cover up our big chunk of meat. But uh, easy to identify. If you wanna spend the time, you can dig down, pull the root out. What you need to do is dig straight down as far as you can around the root, and then pull the plant in it. And you wanna get the tip of the root. The upper part of the root near the stem is actually fairly woody, and you don't wanna eat it. 
So I've never done the computation on whether or not it's, it's a viable food source as far as return on investment. I imagine if you spend a lot of time, you'd probably get a fair number of roots. The amount of calories in there, I'm not sure. Probably something comparable to a carrot. The taste, like a tuber, bland tuber. Be good for some butter, salt and pepper, if you had any, but today we're traveling pretty light. So let's just grab the leaves and turn our meat into a meal. That's a decent start, but we're gonna need a lot more to make sure our clay doesn't get into our meat. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the wild onion and I'm gonna get it inside the meat and then I'm gonna wrap it with the burlap and then we're gonna tie it up and then we're gonna wrap it with the clay and then it'll be set to go. The idea is to cook it for about an hour, hour and a half, uh, 45 minutes to an hour and a half. We're gonna have to do a little bit of guesswork as to how long this is actually gonna take. We don't wanna under undercook it. We don't wanna overcook it. So it's gonna be a little bit of an art to it. We'll be lucky if we get it just right. Uh, we may find that the inside is a little bit on the raw side, but that's okay. We'll cook on the out, cut off the outside, eat the outside, we'll be all set to go. So let's get this thing started. Let's get this thing wrapped up. In case you guys are wondering, cedar, birch bark, works every time. There we go. All right, let's get this in the fire. Bedding's nice and dry. I hope this fire long. It's been raining all night. So all the wood's wet. All right, all right, all right. So the fire's rocking. Now what we gotta do, we're gonna use our stone knife. Check out this blade. That's a pretty sweet knife. So we got our hunk of, hunk of meat. It's all good. Oh no, it fell on the ground. We gotta throw that one out. No, we don't. Guys, it all came out of the ground. So, don't throw your leaves away. These are perfectly edible. So it's like, 
onion. Very spicy. What we're gonna do is gonna take the big bulbs here. We're gonna jam them inside my meat for some bonus flavor. That's right. So all I'm doing is I'm taking it. I'm gonna make a slit and we're gonna jam it in. That's it. I'm gonna play hide the onion. Hide the onion in the meat. Hide the onion in the meat. Man, I love this knife. This is a stone knife. It cuts really well. So again, all I'm doing, slitting it. Hide the onion in the meat. Simple. This works really well with garlic too. In case you're wondering what kind of meat this is, venison. Deer venison, I know you guys were pretty upset by the fact that I used some really old venison. This is also some really old venison. I think it's about four years old as well. Kept frozen. Never been sick by it. Don't plan on it. Cook it well. Should be all good. Hide the onion in the meat. All right, so we got about a bunch in there. I don't know. Lost count. About a bunch. So, that's good. We're going to keep these... And we're going to wrap them on top to add a little bit more moisture so it's going to steam. I got a couple more bulbs here to separate out. And that's going to help protect it with the burdock from the clay because we obviously don't want clay in there. So I'm going to first pick this piece of meat up and we're going to put it underneath to make a nice start of a bed like that. Plop her down. There we go, and we're going to start wrapping it with the burdock. We're going to get rid of the stems. We don't need the stems. And we are going to make ourselves a nice bed. Just like so. We're going to wrap it up nice and tight. So it would be nice to have some bigger burdock, but we're early in the season, so we are going to have to use some of what nature provides. This is just some fresh bark from a tree. <laughs> bark from a tree. You would have never guessed, would you? And <clears throat> these are kind of short too, but we shall make do with what nature provides us. So I'm just going to put these underneath in kind of a basket weave for <clears throat> form. <coughs> <coughs> I still got leak stuck in my throat. <coughs> All right, so <clears throat> we're just weaving this in. This isn't necessary, but it makes the job a whole lot prettier, and it'll keep that clay out of our meat. Oh yeah, working with natural materials. You can see all I'm doing is wrapping it up really ugly like because after I cover this in clay nobody's gonna see it we got our clay here yeah that makes a beautiful sound doesn't it heck of a honk it's gonna take a while to cook this thing Let's get this big ball oh, look at that Look at that big hunk of meat. Ooh, what weighs it? Probably 40 pounds. Oh. All right, now that we got our hunk of meat in the fire, we gotta encase the meat in fire and flame. So we gotta build this fire up all the way over top and make sure that it toasts all the way down and provides heat all the way through the entire animal. So that means the front, because we're not going to be spinning this around to cook it. So let's make this a nice big fire and envelope the entire beast in flame and heat. This fire is rocking now. 
we're just gonna let it do its business. I'm not gonna fuss around with it too much. I don't know how long this is going to take, but I'm gonna give it plenty of time. I'm not gonna rush things. When you use ancestral cooking techniques, primitive cooking techniques, primitive technology, you have to let it do its thing. If you mess around with it, you're liable to break it apart and then you end up with a mess rather than a meal. So I'm gonna go check out my trail camera and see if there's anything in the area. On the trail over here, I noticed there's some deer tracks, which is encouraging. Hey right, guys, I'm, uh, I'm sponsored by Spy Point. I uh, had a Spy Point camera IR7 years and years and years ago when they first introduced them. Now they've got a uh, solar panel charger, which is pretty cool, and a backup internal battery. They've also got a display, so I can see exactly what happened in the field on the camera itself, which is pretty cool. I have to show you later because I don't actually have any events on here. I had it on an, another spot, but uh, there's no tracks. The tracks here, we actually built this trail, goes through the swamp and then through the bush, bushes up here. It's one of the only ways that the animals can get from this side of the property to the other side of the property without doing a whole lot of work. So I'm gonna put it up on the trail here and then you're gonna have to stay tuned to see what kind of images I captured. I uh, did the, bring this to Texas with me and Bob Hanser's property, the Wilderness Living Challenge uh, season three and uh, I got lots of vents on it. It was pretty cool to see the hogs and we were able to figure out exactly what the hogs were doing and where to set up because of this camera right here. So let's set this guy up and see what we can see. So I'm just gonna set this to video mode because I find in video mode you get the most amount of information like a picture times a million. I like to use a little master lock. It's this little cable lock that goes around the actual camera. If somebody wants to take it, they're gonna take it, but make it a little bit harder for them. hard as a rock, which is a good sign. But I'm wondering if the bottom is cooking as well as the top, because obviously the heat's rising. So what I'm gonna try to do is flip it over without making a mess of things. Well, it did fall apart. That should be okay. There we go. Let's have a peek. So you might be concerned about the cleanliness. Obviously there's a lot of dirt here. There, clean. Having it crack like that, there's like this part here is really, you know, the clay is good. The meat doesn't look all that bad. It's gourmet cooking, guys, gourmet cooking. That meat doesn't look terrible. I would not have guessed it would be warm all the way through. I mean, the outside of it's cooked, for sure. It didn't burn. Um, the meat feels firm. I mean, a little bit of clay in there, but cooked clay's all right. I'm gonna bring in, have a closer look before I cut this up. So that there doesn't look half bad. See, it's nice and tender to the touch here. See, the middle is part is probably not totally cooked, um, but the outside's definitely cooked. That's hot, really hot, very steamed. All right, let's cut into it. I should go piece of meat. I'm impressed. I am cutting it with a stone tool. Jay Vision Quest Outdoors provided me with this tool. It's made out of stone. Well, wow, that's um, that meat's well done. There is some grit in there. When I flipped it, 
I broke open. So that's my mistake. Pull out a, a steaming hot leak. That's good. There's definitely some grit in there, not gonna lie. I think I would have had to cover it better and probably add a little bit of sand into the clay mix to help it as a binder. Then it would turn a lot of cement. It would turn into cement and bind it together. I think just a pure clay like that and obviously handling it. But that's good. That's good meat. It's well cooked. All the way through actually. Alright, so my recommendation is I did cook it too a little too long, it's well done. Make sure you wrap it well. Make sure none of that clay gets inside. Add a little bit of sand as a binder. I don't have any sand available on the property. It's all clay here. Um aside from that, maybe a half an hour, 45 minutes. That's what it keep the grid out. So Thanks Jay, Vision Quest Outdoors for the knife. Yeah, there you go. I, I call that a success. For my first time, I'm not wrong with that completely edible piece of meat. For not having access to any tools, no uh, pots and pans, cooking in clay, totally doable. That's a good, good piece of meat. It's got lots of moisture in there. Mouthfuls and mouthfuls of meat. I am right in the middle of the city right now. But I want to introduce you to a plant that you may find locally. It's found all over North America. It's an invasive plant it's called Japanese knotweed or giant knotweed. I'm standing in a stand of knotweed. Um, it is edible. It's not well known as an edible species, but uh, Japanese people do eat it. It's uh, fairly easy to identify. It looks like bamboo, but it does not act like bamboo. It has segments. Um, it can be peeled back like so. I'm just taking the outer coating off of it. Uh, it will be bitter. Once peeled, the inside portion can be eaten with sour. It could be sauteed. You could add it to a salad. It's a tangy, sour, bitter taste. The thing about this is, if I took this home and put it in the dirt, it would form a tuber, it would start crawling and shooting up all over the place. This is a highly invasive plant, but you can make use of it. So you could easily fill up on it. As I said, once fresh in the spring, it pops off easily. Grab a spot here. You can hear that distinctive sound. Crunch, peel off the outer exterior, and on the inside, you have a fairly delicious treat. Like I said, it's sour and bitter. Be careful how you discard this though. Like I said, it will spread up everywhere and cause you all sorts of grief. I have a neighbor who detests this, but it grows up through the fence, shoots up all over the place. But if you can't beat it, join it. It's edible, why not? This stand's been taking over the waterfront, permeating all over here. My son likes to come in here, he grabs a big stick, he wax them down. You can see the growth from last year, these old broken ones. And then from that, new growth comes up. So Japanese knotweed, it's another species that you can make use of if you can find it. And if you can, you should make use of it because the stuff grows absolutely everywhere and it will just take over and decimate an entire area. Hang you. You know it's a good piece of meat. Cause I'm not a lean protein guy. When I get hungry, I don't want to eat lean protein, but this is it's good. It's not chewy. Anyway. Alright guys, that's it for now. If you guys enjoyed this, whatever, you can subscribe or not, I don't care. Um, consider sponsoring the channel. You can do that if I click on the link. It's a monthly subscription. Hopefully I'll be able to add more perks to it. But there you go. That's a good piece of meat. Wild meat. 
cooked in clay over an open fire. Ancient cooking technique, primitive technology. Stay tuned, there's more to come. Season three, the Wilderness Living Challenge is in the pipes. I hope you guys will join me for that. It's gonna be a good one. I'm impressed. I did a good job here. And this knife cooks really well. Wild meat, man. Wild meat. All right, I'm out. Cheers. Check out that blade. It cuts, in a lot of ways, it cuts better than a real knife. A real knife. It cuts better than a modern knife.